what is it that readers can do to put pressure on things in the next legislative session at the city council level, developing different ordinances? What is it that they can offer? Um, we worked really hard to get the Minnesota State Historic Tax Credit extended. Um, we did get one year, which is not a lot be considering how long construction projects go on, but it was in light of all of the other expenditures that needed to happen uh, because of the pandemic, we were really grateful to get that one year. So we're going to be back again this year to ask for an eight year extension, uh, mainly because these projects just do take a very long time. So if folks could reach out to their legislators about like the importance of tax credits, I think that um, I, I was a state legislator in Nevada for four terms. And um, so I did, did a lot of work on state policy there. Um, but I think it's often not it always seems that a direct expenditure is always going to be the best way to help people. But sometimes through, through a tax credit, you get a whole bunch of money leveraged by private, by private developers. And then a small portion of that is matched by state funds. And it actually helps to make these projects larger and to create um, opportunities that, for more affordable housing. So I think reaching out to your legislator to talk about the importance of this tax credit and the, and the way in which it does help out with affordable housing would be really great. I mean, that's what, that's all the work that we're going to be doing between now and May is trying to get people to reach out to their legislators and talk to them about this. So one of the things, uh, I, I'm going to push back on something, but like not in a, there's only one thing way, right? Um, and that is for a really long time, since the 80s, the only real tool we've had at any level of scale in our toolkit for creation of housing with any level of affordability has been the low income housing tax credit. Increasing the amount in the low income housing tax credit, great. Like it serves a need, it serves a piece in our market and it has to go in, ex in combination with, with the bonds. But just because that is the tool we have doesn't mean it's the tool we need. Uh, we are in an unprecedented moment with the amount of resources that are potentially available. Some of it can do things that we have no other tool to do. It can probably do it quite, quite well, quite efficiently. We also historically have seen disinvestment in housing, especially in deeply affordable housing, since the 1970s, like this has been a downward trend. So, and that that is true on the federal level and that has also been the case on the state level. For state appropriated dollars, you know, if you look at the state of Minnesota, it's been well under one half of 1% of state appropriated funds have gone to housing, which is really interesting because you put money into what you value. And, you know, when you think about these, these concepts of like home and what it, means for security and what it means for health and what it means for people to put down roots. It is a social determinant of health in the sense that it becomes foundational to almost every aspect of people's lives. And I think that that is worth more than one half of 1%. And so if we want to be really serious about addressing housing issues, let's continue to fund the programs we have like low income housing tax credit and make sure that it is not a scarcity model. But let's also really deeply invest in some of these bigger solutions and these bigger opportunities. And I think putting money directly into development is something that isn't, it's not a nonsense uh, strategy. I think it's actually a really good strategy. Like public private partnerships are important, but the private piece of it isn't a out of the kindness of our heart and uncompensated. We are paying over a dollar for every private dollar that is going into a low-income housing tax credit deal. All the all of the surplus and any of the federal money coming down needs to be towards housing and, and frankly, through the tax credit program. Um, that doesn't get to the deeper affordability to Margaret's <clears throat> issue. I do think that takes an all-in approach with the cities and the counties and the state and the feds. If we want to do more 30% AMI housing, every single layer of government is going to have to participate, and, and Brooklyn Park has examples of that. Um, but the tax credits are not not enough. There's not enough. There's all these great projects in queue, um, and there only half of them or less are are getting funded. Tax exempt bonding, same thing. Um, there's limits on how much tax exempt bonding Minnesota housing allocates, and we just need to increase those allocations as well as MMB. 
So just more, and tax credits are, like I said, better because they're not direct allocations of funding, they're, they're through a tax incentive. Um, and so they're they're highly used and um, they don't, like I said, with, with the limitation that they don't get to the 30%. One additional thing I would just say is your readers in particular who are, might not be like advocating at the legislature. I, I, I don't have, I, I wish I did more of this, but I don't even advocate at the legislature usually, right? So, you know, I would say your readers <laughs> would just be not against affordable housing. Like, can we, can we get, can we get the middle class white folks to not be against affordable housing? That would be a great first step. Uh, the minu the mi minority voices who are against it have the most insane power and control. Um, and so just to try to convince people not to come out against it, that'd be great. Um, although I will say that's largely less of an issue now than it was 10 years ago. NIMBY was like run amok 10 years ago. But now when I'm, when I'm seeing city councils are approving these projects, maybe it's only a dozen communities, but it's the ones that need it. Richfield, St. Louis Park, you know, the, the inner ring suburbs, they're approving projects, they're not getting funded. We are all for five. Mm -hmm. on our affordable housing project um, at the at the state level. So it's it, so that to me, of course, supply side market rate apartments are needed to market rate is needed to. So just being pro development and being pro housing is the best thing your readers can do. Um, just also, if folks are living one of these small, small houses, older neighborhoods, remember 1971 and earlier, soon to be 1972 and earlier, and they want to protect their neighborhood against develop, redevelopment and keep their houses around, call me. Just mm -hmm. contact Rethos. We will come meet with them. We will help out and we will, we will help them get that done to protect their neighborhood and their houses. There's one of the really great things about the way the Minnesota the state historic tax credit was set up is that uh, the state historic preservation office is required to do an economic impact study every year on all projects that went through so that it is documented by the state of minnesota the benefit that comes out of the minnesota state historic tax credit so i just want to do just a little pushback on not all tax credits are created equal and that sure developers are making money they may or may not be doing this out of the goodness of their heart from their perspective. Doesn't really matter to me um, if they're doing it out of the goodness of their heart or not. I just don't want that building ending up in a landfill. And so I think remembering that not all tax credits are created equal and that actually the way Minnesota set up their historic one was really good. 